Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Retro Gaming Setup Home video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with multiple pieces of AMD news concerning upcoming products. The first of these would be the mobile Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. Just so we're all on the same page, these are not based on the Zen 2 microprocessor architecture, they are not 7nm. Instead, they are derived from the 12nm Zen Plus platform. But even so, these CPUs will be rather appealing for folks who want to buy a budget-based uh, laptop with, say, an RTX 2060 or a GTX 1660 Ti class product. According to the website WCCF Tech, you can actually purchase a laptop with one of those GPUs and a 3750H for around the 1100 US dollar mark, which is actually pretty darn good. Considering that if gaming is your primary purpose, let's just be honest, the CPU is probably not the most important factor for you, it's instead going to be the GPU. So, uh, I imagine that these uh, laptop uh, and GPU combinations will be a rather popular According to WCCF Tech, we will see the flagship along with other Ryzen 3000 mobile SKUs launch in April, so not too long to wait at all. So it's going to be a really nice combination of various OEMs, of course, you're going to be able to purchase these laptops from, including HP, Lenovo, and so on. If you watched yesterday's video, you will recall that I had several friends and myself contact the retailer Bizgroom, which is, of course, the retailer in Singapore, which leaked various Ryzen 3000 series SKUs, including their prices. So uh, myself and several friends contacted them to ask them various questions, such as when these processes will be available. So I have a small update for you because they actually responded to another one of my emails and also a friend as well. He lives in Australia, so he didn't get to contact me in time for yesterday's video. So my friend said that he was planning to travel to Singapore and wanted to know the availability of the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. They told him that they were waiting for AMD to provide them an update to the release date of the Ryzen 3000 series uh, for desktop, but uh, when he pressed them further, they said that uh, they were expecting availability between June and July, but that could be an older release date, and they were still being rather cagey. You might also recall that in yesterday's video, one of the messages that we sent uh, we actually asked them if they could provide information regarding the specifications of the processor, such, such as whether the uh, Ryzen 9 CPUs would feature 16 cores and 5 gigahertz and so on. And they have said that they do not have that information right now and that they will update us as soon as possible. So it's interesting that they do not have this information just yet. So one of two possibilities, of course, exist. The first is that they are no longer able to say anything, and that's the reason that they removed the listing from their online catalog. Basically, AMD kind of slapped them upside the head and said, hey, uh, what are you doing? The other possibility is that they simply do not know this information yet. It has not been uh, provided to them, and that's why they can't pass it off to customers. Just a quick reminder, they have in the past to leak the existence of products and specifications before they were supposed to, including Intel's ninth generation desktop CPUs, and also if memory serves the GTX 1660 Ti as well, they leaked. So it's not like they've not done this stuff before, so it's quite interesting. So I contacted my source who originally told me that the CPUs would launch in July. If you're a new viewer, I just want to quickly tell you that he has proven to be extremely reliable in the past and has provided me information which turns out to be true, including uh, being the first source to tell me that Radeon 7, although he called it Vega 7NM back then because it didn't have an official name, it was a different source that told me it was going to be called Radeon 7, existed. So uh, I asked him again, is he certain of the date of July? And he said yes. As far as he's aware, AMD have not updated uh, the release date for their partners. So basically we're going to see an announcement uh, during June, most likely Computex, and then they will be hitting store shelves in July. So my advice to you, uh, based upon all of the information we've had over the past several days, this is my personal opinion, if you are considering upgrading to an AMD-based uh, platform, 
and you're looking to spend a decent amount of uh, cash on it, let's say you were considering a 2700X and you don't need to upgrade right now and you can wait a couple of months, maybe do so and see what happens over the next few months because most likely we're going to get much more concrete information, uh, let's say by May-ish. Also, he provided me another small tidbit, and that concerns AMD's 50th anniversary. He said that the company are working on a, quote, project, but it didn't have any specific details as to what that is because he has not been briefed on it, only that AMD are working on a special project for their 50th anniversary. So that's going to be quite interesting, and we don't have too much longer to wait until we know exactly what that is. And now switching from AMD over to Intel, we have several developments for upcoming Intel processors and other products. So the first of which is actually Comet Lake, which is mentioned uh, directly in a patch note on freedesktop.org. I'm going to read it out verbatim for you. Comet Lake is an Intel processor containing Gen uh, 9 Intel HD graphics. This patch adds the initial set of PCI IDs. Comet Lake comes off of Coffee Lake, adding the IDs to Coffee Lake ID list. More support and features will be in the patches that follow. End quote. Intel's Comet Lake will launch early next year, and that's according to a couple of my sources. It's going to be a 10 core processor and, of course, aimed at the desktop market. We have no idea how Comet Lake is going to stack up against AMD's Zen 2 processors, so it's going to be fascinating to see how Intel can compete with, uh, in theory anyway, much higher core count processors uh, from AMD. But obviously we yet to know IPC information for either set of processors, and we're not uh, currently aware of what the clock speed for these CPUs are going to be uh, final, and particularly when you uh, factor in overclocking as well. So particularly for gamers, maybe you're still better served with Intel, or possibly you're just better off with AMD. We can only wait. We also have further updates to Intel's products as well. The upcoming version of HW Info will support Snow Ridge as well as Cooper Lake from the company. Plus, Intel have recently uh, hosted a HPC conference where they discussed their strategy going into the next generation of processors. Full credit to Twitter account HPC Guru for bringing this to my attention. The discussion was actually hosted by Trish Dan Kruger, and she began by talking about Intel's history of innovation, the 50th anniversary was last year, and the six pillars they wish to focus on, which is software, security, interconnect, memory, architecture, and process. And basically their strategy right now appears to be pushing towards one software stack with one API uh, allowing for common developer experiences for scalar, vector, matrix, and spatial workloads. Basically just unifying things and supporting CPUs, GPUs, AI, and FPGA, and just making it easier for developers. And you can see that they also have transforming HPC. Cascade Link will supposedly be launching in April as well, according to this information. But what's rather interesting is that according to from what uh, Trish Damkruger has commented on during this conference, I'm going to read this out verbatim, Intel has figured out their problem with 10NM, and they are now ahead of where they expected to be. 3D stacking will not only be memory, and it will also include GPU. As more details come to light about Intel's plans for this, we're going to do a greater dive and certainly go deeper into Fovros. But it's going to be very interesting to see how Intel's strategy evolves, particularly on the software side of things as well. Also in this news video, I wanted to provide you all a small PSA, and that actually concerns a Windows update which is doing the rounds right now. Essentially, when this update installs, it can cause issues with games. Performance can actually diminish and you can get lag spikes. This update is KB4482887. And so what Microsoft suggests in the short term anyway is to simply uh, uninstall the update and just roll back your system before the update was installed if you are experiencing uh, performance problems with your games. And this does inc include popular titles such as Call of Duty. So once again, uh, Microsoft in the short term anyways just suggests that you remove the update. 
think that just about does it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, feel free to leave a comment down below on your thoughts of today's news and also give a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. With all of that said, I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye for now.